Hello and welcome to Bulldog TV News, an affiliate of the USA News Network. I'm Miko. And I'm Carl. Here's what we have for you today. <laughs> President-elect Donald Trump kicks off a thank you tour Thursday off on states that provided his margin of victory in the Electoral College with a series of rallies set to begin in Cincinnati. Trump's cabinet appointments have been overshadowed recently after various critics, including the congressional Democrats and government analysts, have questioned how Trump could serve as president without violating conflict of interest guidelines involving his business ties. Trump and Vice President Pence, Vice President-elect Mike Pence, will visit Indiana early in the day to celebrate Carrier's decision to nearly keep nearly a thousand manufacturing jobs in the state instead of moving them to Mexico. Donald Trump is the first president-elect ever known to go on a nationwide victory tour and political experts aren't surprised he has, is taking a victory lap after, before his inauguration on January 20th. Wisconsin on Thursday plans to begin a recount <coughs> of votes in a presidential election in a response to a request by Green Party candidate Joe Stein. Stein paid $3.5 million Tuesday to clear the way for a recount, although a judge rejected her lawsuit seeking a hand recount in every county. The Stein, the Stein campaign also requested a recount in Pennsylvania and plans to seek one in Michigan. President-elect Donald Trump narrowly defeated Hillary Clinton in three states, which were crucial to his victory in the electoral college. The Clinton campaign is supporting Stein's efforts, though they said it likely wouldn't change the election outcome. A new rule takes effect on Thursday, allowing federal agents with a single search warrant to hack millions of American computers or smartphones at once. The Justice Department, which sought the rule, says it's necessary to keep up with charges and technology used by criminals, especially the ones growing the growing use of botnets. Senate leaders rebuffed a last-ditch bipartisan effort Wednesday to vote on blocking the rule, a defeat for privacy advocates. Under existing rules, FBI agents must go to magistrates in every judicial district which infected computers are known to be located and request warrants to hack into those machines. The change to Rule 41 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure would allow them to go just one to just one judge and to get a warrant to access all those computers. Simultaneously, <coughs> tear-filled tributes were held at packed stadiums in Colombia and Brazil for the victims of this week airs tragedy that claimed 71 lives when a chartered plane crashed while ferrying a scrappy small-town soccer team to the finals of prestigious South American tournament. The tribute took place Wednesday night as crash investigators aided by dramatic cockpit recordings were studying why the British-built jet apparently ran out field before slamming into a muddy mountainside just a few miles from Medellin International Airport. <coughs> For all the concerns raised in the presidential campaign about Donald Trump's fitness to command America's nuclear arsenal, the immediate questions he's likely to face as president aren't about the launching these weapons, but modernizing them. He'll have to make political fraught decisions about a U.S. nuclear arsenal that in some ways has become de decrepit. Trump's transition website says he recognizes the uniquely catastrophic threats posed by nuclear weapons and cyber attacks, aiding that he will be modernizing the nuclear arsenal to ensure it continues to be effective, a, a defective deterrent. The questions left unanswered, how much modernization is enough, and in a wor world of widening cyber threats, how vulnerable is the U.S.? Netflix subscribers can now be on many of their favorite shows and movies, even though when they don't have an internet connection, the long-awaited offline option announced Wednesday gives Netflix 87 million subscribers offline access to videos for their first time in the streaming service. Decade-long decade history, Netflix is matching a downloading feature that one of its biggest rivals, Amazon.com, has been offering to its video subscribers for the past year. The latest version of company's mobile app included a download button on the details page for a film or TV series, but not the titles for the streaming service, are currently available to watch offline. The updated also includes a new menu item showing what's available for download. 
Spotify announced t t late Wednesday that Drake is the most streamed act on the platform with 4.7 billion streams. The rapper has almost has the most streams album with the song Views 2.45 billion and One Dance 970 million. Mike Posner's I Took a Pill in Ibiza C Bremex came in second after Drake's One Dance for top songs, followed by the Chainsmokers Don't Let Me Down. Rihanna and Drake's <coughs> work and Sia's Cheap Thrills. Justin Bieber, Rihanna, 21 Pilots, and Kanye West round out to the top five artists this year. Paul Bettany is a set to a star Ted Kaniski, also known as a Unabomber in the Discovery Channel's upcoming high profile, FBI crime drama manifesto. Kevin Spacey and Dana Brunetti ex executive produced the show through their trigger. Street Productions banner manifesto explores how the FBI caught infamous cr criminal masterminds with the first season set to focus on FBI agent Jim Fitzgerald, a specialized linguist who unconvictionally means brought the Unabomber to justice after a near 20 year manhunt. Dwayne Johnson's HBO series Ballers <laughs> is moving to California from Florida for its third season and has been conditionally approved for, to receive an $8.3 million tax credit for the, from the state. The series will generate an estimated $33.5 million in qualified expenditures, defined as wages paid to below the, li the line workers and payments to end state vendors making it eligible for a 25% tax credit for its first season in California, allowed by a 20% credit for any successive seasons. Ballers is the seventh series <laughs> to relocate to California under the state's expanded tax incentive program launched last year. A new five-year deal has been struck between Major League Baseball, team ownership, and its players' union, extending a 21-year streak for labor peace the agreement was announced shortly before 9 p.m. Eastern Time Wednesday night, just a few hours before the current deal expired, with both sides continuously negotiating for nearly 24 straight hours. The new collective bargaining agreement avoids a complete shutdown of baseball's hot stove and would have created player lockouts and immediate halts to upcoming winter meetings. The last MLB player strike last seven and a half months from 1994 to 1995, and led to the first cancellation of the World Series in over 60 years. Seven-footer <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns, Towns crushed a career-high 47-point clinic for the Timberwolves, but it wasn't enough to keep the Knicks from edging out a 106-104 win on the last few seconds effort from Carmelo Anthony. Towns seemed to trade <coughs> jabs with Knicks, with kicks big man Chris Chris Trapps, Porzingis, who finished the night with 29 points and 8 rebounds to lead the Knicks. In addition, the game-winning jumper, Melo, contributed 14 points of his own despite the loss. Towns set or met numerous records, becoming the youngest player in the Timberwolves' history to reach the 40-point mark, only the third youngest player to, rec to record more than 40 points and 15 rebounds in a single game just behind Kevin Durant and Shaquille O'Neal. Kentavious Caldwell Pope pushed 25 points to power the Pistons past Celtics 121 to 114. The Toronto Raptors took full advantage of a weakened Grizzlies squad to crack, scratch out a 120 to 105 win. Jordan Clarkson and the Lewis Williams each post 18 points to the Lakers defeat the Bulls 96 to 90. Russell Westbrook bust out his fourth straight triple-double as the Thunder roll over the Wizards 126 to 115. The Spurs can't come from behind to beat the Mavs 94 to 87, led by Patty Mills, 23 points off the bench. Hassan Whiteside takes a down 25 points and 16 rebounds to help the Heat burn the Nuggets 106 to 98. The Suns eclipse the Hawks 109 to 107. The Trailblazers outpaced the Pacers 131 to 109, and the game between the Kings and 76ers was postponed due to condensation on the court, despite DeMarcus Cousins' best efforts to help mop up the moisture. For the first time in club history, Toronto FC is headed to the MLS 
MLS Cup to face Seattle Sounders FC after outscoring the Montreal Impact 5-2 and winning the Eastern Conference Final 7-5 to on aggregate. <coughs> the two deciding goals for Toronto came in the first half of time of extra time as both teams were tied on the aggregate 5 to 5 after full time the MLS Cup is set for Saturday December 10th at BMO Field in Toronto for an 8 p.m. Eastern Time kickoff with TV coverage of on primetime Fox broadcast affiliates The Islanders evicted the Penguins 5 to 3 a trio for the first period of goals while all the flames needed to burn the Maple Leafs 3 to zip Logan Koicher slaps in a pair of goals to power the Sharks over the Kings 4-1. That's all we have for you today. I'm Miko. And I'm Carl Hughes. Join us again tomorrow for the Daily News. Bulldog TV News is an affiliate of the USA News Network.